Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Before Japan, I'm going to be talking with you about some obstacles that I faced in my return to Japan, as well as give you guys some updates on my return to Japan this year, 2019. Woo. Just a little quick, brief history,、uh, backstory on my return to Japan. So, after I got out of the US Navy in 2015, went back to school in 2016,、um, didn't really do so well, and I decided to. Try some classes at the community college in the area I was at.、Um, didn't do so well there either, so I decided to take a break from school to kind of you know, get my priorities in order.、Uh, went back home to Ohio.、Uh, I was there for several months and decided at the end of 2018 to pursue going back to Japan to study abroad. Moved out here to stay with my brother, save up for my return to Japan. It really hasn't been easy. I've gone through Many、uh, different obstacles in my return to Japan. You know, one of them being financial. There wasn't really a whole lot of job opportunities in Ohio. And in Michigan, I just knew that since I wasn't really going to school there anymore, there wasn't really a point to me being there anymore. And there wasn't really a, a wide job market to really help me save up anyway. It made sense to,、uh, to come back home, at least for a little bit. And plus,、uh, my folks were starting up a production company down there, so I wanted to help them out and you know, get that going. So I、uh, decided to move back with, in with them back in Ohio. Over time, got to talking with、uh, some old shipmates of mine who made the move out to Tokyo to study abroad, and I was like, I didn't know you could use a GI Bill to study abroad. Or, you know, I figured that you know, your spending power would be very limited because you only get so much to spend in schools abroad. And you know, your BH may fluctuate wildly, so I just kind of put it off as like a, I don't know, I don't want to get caught in another country with like a low amount of money or anything like that. You know, when I heard one of my shipmates was getting accepted to a school out in Tokyo on the GI Bill, you know, I reached out to him and we got to talking, and you know, he was telling me all about how to do it and stuff, and it was just like, you know, you'd basically be going to a school in America, but they have a campus in Japan. And I'm like, That's awesome. <laughs> you know, I want to get in on that action. And I kind of wish I would have known about that back while I was still stationed in Yokosuka because, like, hell, I probably could have just taken a train out to Tokyo and applied there in person. You know, I was kind of in a, in a weird point in my life at that point. You know, it's just like, you know, I wasn't really going anywhere. The job market in my local town in Ohio wasn't really doing so well. And,、uh, you know, I was always worried about my car breaking down or something like that. So it's kind of funny considering that I moved、uh, almost across the country in that car. But, you know, a sera, I guess. Yeah, decided to shift my focus to studying abroad in Japan and really taking it seriously this time because, you know, I've had these little bouts of like, well, maybe I could study in Japan or something like that. And, you know, it just it never really came to be because I'd always talk myself out of it. Or I'd have somebody else talk me out of it and just kind of accept my fate, but I'd end up just being miserable. But I decided at the end of 2018 that in this year, 2019, I was gonna make it out to Japan. Packed up all my stuff, put it in a car and a little tiny U haul behind me, and made the trek out from Ohio to where I'm at now, North Carolina. Been saving up, working jobs here and there, doing freelance work, ended up selling a lot of my old camera gear on eBay, made a good chunk of change there. But、uh, unfortunately, I had to end up using it all due to car repair costs because, you know, <laughs> as I guessed, the car I rode in on had some problems. And once I arrived here, and after a while, it just、uh, stopped working, basically.、Uh, my brother and I got to fixing it. You know, I don't know anything about cars, so, like, I couldn't tell you anything about exactly what was wrong with it. But the basic gist is that there was a lot more wrong with it than we'd initially thought. So I ended up dipping into my savings a bit more than I'd originally anticipated. Between that and,、uh, you know, paying off a book loan that I took out back when I was at Western in order to release my transcripts to the college I wanted to apply to in Japan, that ended up pretty much wiping out my entire savings. So, I had to start from square one. But thankfully, at the beginning of this year, I got a job working at home. I was able to、uh, have some consistent income while I was working on、uh, some freelance projects as well. And I also got some,、uh, some new clients too. So, I was really excited about that. And yeah, man, it was starting to look up. But、uh, about a week ago, 
I got let go from the work at home position because it's a little complicated and I don't want to like give away like where I worked. Basically, I worked for a company who had uh, clients in different service sectors, I guess, one way to put it. So I essentially got let go from a particular project. The company's policy was that if you get so many low survey scores, then uh, you're let go. But a lot of times when I would get the low survey scores, it wasn't for me and the service that I provided for the customers, it was for the product. You know, they were complaining about that the product didn't do this or charged them too much or you know, whatever the case may be. So like all the negative surveys, even though they were more about the product or the company in general, I ended up taking the hit for because I was the one that answered the call. Even though like I did just fine over the phone and when my supervisor pulled me aside to kind of tell me that they were letting me go, like she was kind of confused about it too because like she didn't want to let me go because like she listened in on some of my calls and they were like, you're doing just fine, you know, you helping out customers and you got some positive surveys, but uh, you know, it's the client's policy that you get so many negative surveys, you gotta end up uh, letting you go. And I did get some negative surveys at first and I was pretty new at the time, so I didn't really know like the workflow of everything just yet. Those ended up kind of weighing me down after a while, so that's part of the reason why they ended up letting me go. But she did highly encourage me to reapply to a different uh, client that they have, so that's what I've done. I ended up using her as a reference, so we'll see where it goes from there. It's gonna be okay, I think. And plus, you know, I got some new freelance clients, so, you know, worst comes to worst, just continue to do freelance work and uh, save up from there. And so the next thing I want to talk about, which is the main reason I'm even making this video, is about uh, the college that I'm applying to. As you guys know, I've already submitted in all the paperwork that they needed, and then they requested an interview with me. So we did a little Skype interview at two o'clock in the morning my time, but it was like four in the afternoon their time. You know, I studied up on some stuff I wanted to ask them as well as, uh, you know, studied up on like, what, what's a college interview like? Because I've never done an interview for college before, so I have like no idea what to expect. So like I had all these different questions and stuff lined up and I figured it was just gonna be like, kind of like a job interview in a way. Just like, a, so tell me about yourself and what makes you a good fit for this school and blah, 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 you know, stuff like that, right? But it ended up being for like, 13 minutes, them pretty much just asking me about why my grades were so terrible, why you ended up transferring schools and still getting even worse grades and all this other stuff. And they were like really concerned about the viability, I guess, of my success if I were to get accepted at the school in Japan. They just ended up making me feel like a complete piece of shit. Cause like, you know, I'd understand if it was at the end of 2017 and I was applying I was just in a, a way different headspace back then. You know, a lot of that contributed to my failure in those schools, you know? It was a really bad headspace, lack of social support, because, you know, I didn't really have any friends in the area. My family was all pretty far away, and they were kind of busy doing their thing anyway. I felt like it was just kind of me against the world, and uh, the world was winning. And I also, you know, as I talked about before, you know, I was dealing with a lot of adjustments reverse culture shock and stuff like that, you know, because I was getting used to being a student for the first time in 10 years, getting used to being a civilian for the first time in five years, then, you know, getting used to being an American in America for the first time in like two years, you know, granted I visit and stuff, but like being in the environment actually living here versus visiting here is totally different. So I had a lot of adjustment to go through when I was, uh, first going back to school. I had a major I wasn't really all that jazzed about, did really poorly, uh, then switched majors, did a little better, but then, you know, the depression, anxiety started setting in, ended up screwing my grades up even more, ended up going to the community college to kinda help build my GPA back up, and in, in addition to that, they had like an Adobe course, so I could learn more about like Photoshop and Premiere and all this sorts of stuff. So that was the big hook for me, was to learn more about how to edit videos and maybe learn some good workflow tips and things like that. But uh, I wasn't solving my core problems. Figured like a change of school would help me. 
but it didn't really. I just ended up taking my problems to that school. So I decided to take a break at the end of my fall semester over there, come back home for a little bit, get my head on straight, and then just kind of figure out the next move. And you know, it was in that time I had a lot of personal growth. You know, I had a lot of downs in 2018, but I also had a lot of ups as well. You know, I felt like it was the first time in my life I felt like I can actually do this, not not necessarily a YouTube thing, but like making videos, whether it's sitting behind a desk, editing them, or actually, you know, out in the field, you know, recording stuff on my camera, doing some pretty good camera work. Like, you know, the stuff I did for my folks production company was really top notch. It ignited that fire and that confidence in me saying, you know, I can do this and I want to do this. And that's one of the reasons why I want to go back to Tokyo so much because all my clients are out there. I want to network with some more people, get to work with them, get to do some camera work, editing, all that stuff, you know, because I recognize that my strengths aren't necessarily being an on-camera presence. You know, I mostly just do, do this YouTube stuff just for fun. And if anything, documenting and legacy and things like that. But I realize it's not my strength, but I still do it because I like doing it. But my strengths lie within that, or that more specifically. <laughs> Sitting down, editing, putting things together, or also just being behind the camera and just kind of getting good close-ups and you know, nice sweeping shots and things like that and just kind of getting what the scene needs basically. And so that's why I wanted to pursue something in film production because that seems pretty up my alley and it'll give me a chance to network with some people and get hands-on gear that is way, way out of my budget and get some time to, to work with it. So if I do end, end up landing a production job or something like that, I'm not all like, ooh, what's this button do? You know? Wow, I really went off topic there. But basically, um, that interview um, didn't go so well. They talked about my grades a lot. That was pretty much the driving force of the conversation. And you know, I kept on telling them, you know, I, I took that year off. I was working with my folks at a production company, kind of helped clear my head. And then I decided, you know, I wanted to go back out to Japan. But they didn't, they didn't really give me enough time to kind of clarify that position of why I wanted to go back. It kind of painted me in a pretty bad light. You know, it made me sound like I'm escaping my problems. You know, the reality is I'm putting myself in the best possible position for success because I feel like environment plays a huge role in whether or not we succeed. You know, it's like I said in one of my earlier videos, you know, some plants do really well in the desert, others not so much. So you just gotta find the environment that's right for you. And for me, I feel that right environment is back in Japan. I have a lot of friends that are still out there. I mean, granted, they have jobs and stuff, so it may not be as easy to hang out with them, but you know, we can still go for a, a little brewski or two at, in Shinjuku at Golden Guy or out in Shibuya or something like that. We'll, we'll figure something out. So it's not impossible to get a hold of them. And uh, there's just a whole burgeoning scene out there. So there's like a whole bunch of new people to talk to and make movies with and stuff. And it's just, it just seems to be like my scene. And plus with the uh, 2020 Olympics coming up in Tokyo, you know, it just seems to be like, you know, it's time. It's time for me to get my ass back to Japan. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I've rambled and raved long enough in this video, wow. So I think we'll, uh, we'll end things here. Um, like I said, TLDR version was, interview didn't go so good, but I am holding out hope. Never say never. We'll see what happens, man. I mean, just because I didn't do so good in the interview doesn't mean that I'm not gonna get accepted or whatever the case. So I'm just gonna kind of ride this out until I get word from them on whether or not I'm accepted. And if I am, awesome. If not, then I'll know the main factor in the decision was because of my low grades and I'll just apply to the local community college, get my GPA back up, reapply, and go from there. So, in any event, with that said, this is the Andy San, signing for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.